Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on forces and motion today's lesson will be about acceleration. Let's start with some definitions. Acceleration is when we have a change of speed, so when something is increasing its speed or decreasing its speed, but we have acceleration also when direction changes. We can reformulate the same sentence in a shorter way because we defined in the previous lesson what we mean with speed and direction combined together. Because speed and direction is velocity. And therefore we can say that acceleration is a change of velocity. And here's our formula. As we said, acceleration happens when we have a change of velocity. And as you can see, it's a formula which is very similar to what we have for speed. Uh, we saw that average speed can be defined as a ratio between the distance traveled and the time taken. In a similar fashion, acceleration is defined as a change of velocity. That's really the key word here, change over the time taken. Again, this is a word uh, formula, but we do prefer um, symbol formulas. And this is the same thing written in symbols. So we have A, that stands for acceleration, T, that stands for time, and then the top part represent this change. Because indeed we have two symbols, V and U, and what do they stand for? When we want to represent a change, we have to see how something has been modified, has changed from beginning to end. So when we're going to calculate the acceleration of an object, we're going to compare the speed this object had at the beginning and the speed this object had at the end. Or as we say, the initial speed and the final speed. So this change will be the difference between the final speed of the object minus the initial speed. So let's put this formula to a news. A very um, typical example, an ex a car that starts from rest, that means with zero speed, and we'll put the time equal to zero, and then increases its speed and after 10 seconds has reached a speed of 30 meters per second. So let's use our formula. A, that is the acceleration, is equal to the final speed. The final speed is 30 minus the initial speed. The initial speed was zero because the car started from rest, divided by the time taken for this acceleration, for this change of speed, which is 10 seconds. We work out our math and the result is that the acceleration for this car is 3 meters per second squared. And that is very peculiar because we saw that uh, the unit for speed is meters per second. Here we have meters per second squared. And why is that? Uh, because acceleration can be viewed as a rate of change of speed. Or in other words, it's meters per second every second, which works out as meters per second squared. Now, some wording. In general, uh, when we have an object that has an increasing speed, like this car here, we say that the object has a positive acceleration. On the other hand, when an object slows down, so when the speed decreases, for instance, let's see, let's uh, let's figure again this car slowing down to a halt. We say that the object has a negative acceleration, or also we can say it has a deceleration, or another word which you really like, it has a retardation. These three terms are synonyms. You can use them, and they have which one you like. They all have the same meaning. I told you at the beginning 
that you can have acceleration when you have a change of speed but also when you have a change of direction and actually uh, you can have acceleration even if the speed is not changing and you're just changing your direction and this is an example of what I'm saying uh, let's imagine you're driving along a windy, you know, like um, uh, any kind of road uh, up the hills, no? So you have to change direction because the, the, the road uh, makes many turns and curves but you manage to keep the same speed so if you look at the speedometer of your car you're still going at the same speed here I'm using meters per second on your speedometer I assume you'll have kilometers per hour but the meaning is the same so here you have a speed of 20 meters per second here you have an, again a speed of 20 meters per second and again here we have a speed of 20 meters per second so the speed is not changing but here you have this direction here you have this direction and here you have this direction and since direction is changing velocity is changing and when you have a change of velocity you have an acceleration so what was the learning goal of this lesson? by the end of this lesson you should be able to calculate the acceleration of an object by using the formula we saw at the beginning and also in general to tell that acceleration is a change of speed and or a change in direction next we're going to see how we could represent movement by using distance over time graphs or speed over time graphs